What's going on everyone? Goldgas here. This episode is going to be looking at the negative fan pressures on the Worcesters and the Alpha Boilers. If you enjoy, drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Push that bell notification button as well. If you don't do that, you might miss out on some uh, new videos that drop. Maybe some new promotions and new competitions. So it's worth doing. On the test points, you want a negative reading. The more negative it is, the better. So negative 10 is great, zero is really, really bad. So I'm going to show you common causes for bad pressure readings, some other things you should look out for. Also, I'm going to put up a listing of the readings so you can refer to these in the future if you don't have a manual handy. Here's a quick flow chart. Any of those red arrows, if there's a blockage anywhere there, then you're going to have a more positive reading. So it just gives you a bit of insight. So it starts from the fan, then to the burner arm, into the burner and the main heat exchanger. We've got the baffles obviously as well. And then you've got the sump and then it goes up into the flue duct, up into the flue turret and then out to your flue. First example is on the R Green Stars uh, in the combustion box on the left hand side there's the little test point just below the fan usually a little creamy white cap remove that put your manometer on or your U-gauge or your analyzer if it's got that setting and then you want to put it into maximum mode high fire and then refer to the MI or I'll do screenshots and I'll do listings of the readings you should be getting on particular models. Next example is an Alpha Intec 2. The test point is on the fan. There's no cap on it. So stick your manometer on there. Put the boiler into standby mode. Remove the condense trap and then you want to hold the standby and the reset key for up to 15 seconds and it will come up with a PPM reading and the fan only will run, the boiler won't fire up which is handy um, because obviously if you do that on the Worcester it fires up and if you hit temperature you have to run a hot tap or wait for it to cool so this is good because the fan only runs and it will go up to 55 on the reading and then you want to refer to your manual or I will do a screenshot again and you can refer to those readings. This one's on the eye range. Again, just showing you an example of how it's done. Last one, probably the most common one, the juniors and the RI range. There's two little white caps on these. You want to use the top one, well it's like a clear plastic cap rather than a little rubber one. It's top one there, use that and then you'll get your readings.
First thing to check, your manometer or U-gauge hose. Make sure it makes a tight seal on the test point and your U-gauge. Also, make sure it's not kinked or if there's any splits. Secondly, the fan itself, does it sound like it's running on high fire? It should be running a lot quicker and noisier. If you're in doubt, call us the technical. They can give you some help. Check the continuity on the cable, to the, on the board, to the fan, and you might need a new fan. Assuming that's okay. Condense, is that blocked? You wanna be cleaning that out on every service anyway. Uh, check the condense trap and also where the condense terminates if there's no blockage there. If there's a blockage there, it will rise up into the sump and that will make a blockage and your reading will be greater. Assuming that's okay, uh, you wanna be doing your working pressure. Again, you wanna be doing that anyway. That's all good, move on. Then you wanna be checking your flues. Make sure there's no obstructions on the outside and the terminal. Uh, there's a little clip here where I cover the terminal partially with a spirit level and it just shows how it can affect your readings. So referring to that flow chart, going from the burner arm into the heat exchanger, so you've got the burner cup before, make sure that is nice and clear, use a soft bristle brush, shine your torch through it on the Worcesters, you should be able to see daylight, and use an air duster or a compressor if necessary. Then we've got the heat exchangers, Worcester offer cleaning kits with the brushes, I'll do screenshots of part numbers for those. Also, I've got videos on how to clean all these heat exchangers, so I'll do a link above, and you can click on those if you're interested in watching how to clean the heat exchangers. Heat exchangers clean. If you're still getting a bad reading, you want to check the sump, make sure there's no blockage there, and also the flue duct. Again, I've got another video where there was a screwdriver in the flue duct, and that would also cause a negative reading to be poor. Then, have got a flue turret doesn't often block up but you might have some sort of washer in there restricting it and then you want to check the flue length make sure it's allowed to be whatever length is there if it looks too long refer to the manual and that will show you how far you can go with those flue lengths each spoiler will be different and each model and output will be different and terminal as well I think we covered that anyway make sure there's nothing on the outside blocking that and then you might need to start replacing components. Burner on the Intec, they often need replacing because they get too far blocked and even the compressor can't clear it, so they often need replacing. But call the manufacturers with your model. Remember to get serial and GC number and they can help you out with any questions you have and I'm sure they'll be able to give you a solution to the problem. If this has helped you out or you enjoy my videos anyway, Give me a thumbs up, it does help the videos and how they do in the long run. If you add me on social media, on Instagram or Twitter, then you can find some competitions, promotions and some plumbing disasters as well. That does it for this video, thanks for watching.